Good morning, Year 6. I hope you're well and enjoying the Jungle Book so far. The aspects of it we've read uh, to date, the two small sections, hopefully reminded you of some of the aspects of direct speech and how we utilise them within our writing. Today, what we're thinking about is how a character is described within the story or characters are described within the story through the use of adjectives and verbs. To be successful in today's lesson, we'll need to understand uh, the section of Ricky Tiki Taki, in fact, the whole of Ricky Tiki Taki, Tiki Tavi, sorry, that we're going to read. We'll need to be able to identify the verbs and adjectives within this passage, and we'll need to understand the impact of those language choices that are made upon the uh, reader's perception of the different characters that he's described. Okay, a little bit of a step back now, thinking back to the earlier work in the week relating to direct speech. What I'd like you to do initially is to understand within these sections, um, we, sorry, within uh, the use of direct speech, which is correct statement and which is an incorrect statement. Here we've got four statements. Now, two of these are correct and two of these are incorrect. You've got to identify which are correct and which are incorrect. If you'd like to do this on your sheet, you can do. If you want to do it just in your head, you can do. Either way, pause the video whilst you read through the sheets. You need to be quite forensic, quite careful with these because they're a bit trickily written. Okay, first one. Only use inverted commas if the verb is said. It's nonsense. It's not true at all. We use inverted commas for every passage of direct speech. I would like you as writers to start trying to use a, more, a wider variety of speech verbs. A lot of us still rely on maybe using said and an adverb, so said loudly. Could we change it to shouted? Could we sh change it to how he's shouting? Could we change it to whisper? Could we show something with that verb choice? So it's not true that you can only use, or you only use inverted commas with said. You use it for any direct passage of speech, whether it's using it, the reporting clause of said or any other speech verb. Okay, we, the second one, I, I imagine a lot of you were, you, in the correct column it's actually incorrect because whenever there's a piece of direct speech if it's split by that reporting clause so if it says johnny johnny was desperate to see the pigeon or johnny um leave me alone he said because i want to get out or something I'm, I'm, this is a bad example but basically the guys try and split up the direct if you're splitting up the direct speech with that reporting clause the second element of the direct speech needs a lower case letter at the beginning of it unless it's an, a proper noun so the direct speech starts with the capital letter but then if the clause uh, if the direct speech is split with the reporting clause you need to put the second element starting with a lower case letter unless it's a proper noun a comma at the end of direct speech unless the speech ends with uh, full stop capital uh, sorry a full stop an exclamation mark or question mark that's correct we do need that comma at the end of direct speech and the final one new speaker new line really important skill we looked at that passage from the jungle book yesterday it was really tricky to read when it wasn't correctly punctuated with new speaker new line so let's make sure we do that every time okay guys we're going to look then at ricky Dicky tabby I'm going to read two, uh, two paragraphs from it. Then we're going to unpick some vocabulary relating to it. You're going to do a task looking at that piece of vocabulary. And we'll talk, I'll talk to you about it first. And secondly, you're going to read the rest of the passage. Or we're going to look, unpick the rest of the passage, really think about how it's written. And you're going to unpick the whole passage, the whole short story, um, as your final task. So Ricky Tiki Tavi. This is the story of the great war that Ricky Tiki Tavi fought single-handed through the bathrooms of the big bungalow in the Segawa early cantonment. Darzi, the tailor bird, helped him and Chuchundra, the muskrat, who never comes out in the middle of the floor but always creeps around by the wall, gave him advice. But Ricky Tiki did the real fighting. So this is that idea that a lot of Rajar Kipling stories have where they're using animals as characters. So I can see that happening. I can see one, one character being given advice. I can see as well the settings described, the bathrooms of the big bungalow in the Segawali cantonment. Now, the way that builds up, I know that the smallest element's going to be first, so the bathrooms. I then know that the setting in which the bathrooms are placed is the bungalow. So I might already know what a bungalow through somebody I know lives living in one, or I might need to think, well, if it's if it's noteworthy that it's a big bungalow, maybe it's a small type of building. What type of building could have a bathroom in which could be quite small? And then in Segoali, 
Now, because that's a capital letter, I can see it's a proper noun. So that might tell me it's the pr place name of something larger where a number of residents resides. I can see that the tailor bird's name is Darzi. I can see that the muskrat's name is Chachundra. Darzi's name comes at the beginning of a sentence, but Chachundra is in the middle of the sentence but starts with a capital letter. So as I pick this passage, I can read certain elements within it because I know my grammar skills. The second paragraph then, he was a mongoose, rather like a little cat in his fur and his tail, but quite like a weasel in his head and his habits. So it's quite critical of him because it shows what he looks like, but also how he is. He's a weasel, he's not normally an animal which is described as, as a positive. Um, his eyes and the end of his restless nose were pink. He could scratch himself anywhere he pleased with, with any leg, front or back, that he chose to use. He could flop up his tail till it looked like a bottle brush, and his war cries he scuttled through the long grass was ricky dicky 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 chuck. So we've got this element of a story now. We're starting to unpick it. Now, the first job we're going to try and do is think about the vocabulary that's been used here. So if we look at this section and we look at bungalow and mongo, mongo. So if you think back to this, we can see where bungalow was used. It was the words the big bungalow in the Segwali cantonment. And mongoose starts the purple section with he with mongoose. So if we look at this, and you've got this on the passage of uh, reading that you've, you've printed out as part of your pack today. If we look at these sections, what I've done is the top section of this page has some possible language that you could include um, in these vocabulary maps. So mammal, reptile, a small house or cottage. Um, and it's all got mixed up. You know me and the printers, guys. I get, I get all flummoxed and it's the same with the laptop. I've got all flummoxed and they've all got mixed up. Even me now, I'm covering up the last letter of lake. Okay, so I'll move out of the way and get out of the way of the lake. Now, those 12 sections fill some of the parts to your um, your vocabulary maps. Now, you've got an image of a mongoose. You've got an image of a bungalow. What I need you to do is to fill in um, the rest of those grids with the information I've given you. The, the more observant of you, like Hania, will spot that there's 12 sections at the top, but there's only 10 parts that are missing at the bottom. So therefore, there's two that are superfluous. They're a waste of time. So you need to get rid of some, and you might even need to, uh, you actually need to, invent, you need to think of your own elements of the word part. So with bungalow, you've got to break it up into word parts and think about whether you've ever seen the bung or low anywhere else of mon or goose elements of a word that have reminded you of any other words so have a think about that okay so you're going to complete those grids for me that's your first or second task if you've done the correct and incorrect with the direct speech recall next section of our, our lesson then guys what you sorry as i was saying with mammal you might think it's a synonym for a mongoose. However, you might also think that reptiles are synonym for mongoose. And using your year three and year six science knowledge and classification work, you know that an animal can't be both a mammal and a reptile. So you've got to identify which one it is. So have a think about that. And if you need to do some research, if you can find a dictionary, that might help you a little bit. But I think you should be able to try and pull it together. Okay, guys, so looking at these sections again. We've got this section from the, these two sections from the beginning of Ricky Tiki Tabby. If we think about this story, we can see that there's verbs and there's adjectives in it. As I look through the verbs, I can see that the first one I noticed was fought, so I highlight fought. I think Ricky Tiki Tabby fought. Now, the fact he's fighting shows that it's a battle, shows that it's not an easy situation he's faced with. Okay, so fought is a verb which shows me something about what he's experiencing. Taylor word helping him. Helping shows that relationship is, is one of concern, one of care. Okay, and it shows me something about how the Taylor bird Darcy is affecting the life of Ricky Picky Tabby. Now here, creeping round. So Chachundra, the idea that he's creeping round shows me that he's maybe stealthy, so clever, but it also might show me that he's, he's sneaky. Now, we've got a modal verb there if he could scratch himself. So that modal verb shows me that he doesn't always. He must, and he, he, if he says he must scratch himself, it'd show me he had an illness. But the fact that he can, so could scratch himself anywhere he pleased, shows me he's got the capacity to, but isn't always doing it. And scratching himself is quite an indicative verb of being a bit dirty, maybe. Okay, he could fluff up. Again, we've got that modal verb. He could fluff up his tail it look like a bottle brush okay so fluffing up okay so he's got the ability to do that he doesn't always do it he's not made to do it shows me that so within these verbs if i'm looking and this was the page i was looking at particularly i think which one do i think is the most powerful and i probably think 
Uh, oh, I liked Scuttled as well, should I say. So as he scuttled, I thought Scuttled was a really lovely movement there that shows somebody moving around in different ways. So Scuttled, I thought, was great. But if I look at them, I'm thinking Freeps. Freeps, I think, is a really powerful verb. It shows both the, the situation somebody's faced with if they're having to creep, but it also shows me that they're stealthy, they're smart enough to do it. Okay, guys, now looking at our adjectives. When we're thinking about the adjectives within this section, I can see the Great War, so it shows it wasn't a quick battle. The Great War that tiki, Ricky Tiki Tabby fought. I can see that the bungalow wasn't a small one, it was a big one. So that might tell me that normally a bungalow is quite a small building, if you think to our earlier task. I can see that the cat isn't large, the cat isn't ginormous. That shows me maybe about the vulnerability of the cat. I can see that... He, his restless nose, um, his eyes and the end of his restless nose are pink. Now, if his nose is restless, it's always moving around. It shows me that he's a bit furtive. He's a bit interested in what's going on. He's always moving his nose around. Now, guys, you don't want to get poked by my nose moving around, but the restless nose is quite evocative as an adjective as well. Then we've got, I think that restless is the most powerful adjective within this piece of writing. Okay, guys, we've also got some other elements within this. We've got a couple of similes. We've got the one later on where it looks like a bottle brush, um, and that shows me about the shape of his tail because bottle brushes are brushes which can fit inside the neck of a bottle. But we've also got this idea of like a weasel in his head and his habits. I think that's quite a negative characterization of some uh, of an animal. It's like a weasel because weasels normally are not very well perceived within literature, within fables. So I think that's probably a negative characterization. So the, the animal that you pick, if you pick a simile that's based around uh, uh, an animal, tells a little bit about your perception of the character that you're describing, I think. So we've unpicked that one and I've, I've spotted there some language that I thought was important. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to read the whole story. Now, this is just the first page of it. I think you've got quite, I think it's five or six pages. So I'm sorry it's a little bit of extra printing. But if you can access the device, you don't need to print it. You can just read it through. What you will need to print is this section. So this is asking you to identify the impact of verbs and adjectives within Ricky Ticky Tabby. If you look here, I've given you an example. So I've, I've shown here there's the word clung. So one day uh, a high summer flood washed him out of the borough where he lived with his father and mother and carried him kicking and clucking down a roadside ditch. He found a little wisp of glass floating there and clung to it. So that verb clung shows me how desperate he was. In the same section, there's the idea that the, the wisp of grass is a little one. So little I've underlined, but I've put the, the uh, sentence with little wisp of grass in. And you can see there that the clung we've said about, and then little wisp of grass, little wisp, little shows me that it's small. But even though uh, it's so small, the fact that he clung to it shows how desperate he was. So both of those, the adjective and the verb, show me how desperate he was. So, guys, what I'd like you to do today is read through Ricky Ticky Tabby when you finish the vocabulary and the true or false work from earlier, the correct or incorrect work, and then complete that table for the Ricky Ticky Tabby. Good luck with that. I look forward to seeing that. I think that language will help you if you're writing later in the week. Thank you for your focus today, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.